Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the matte Diskin Fire. This will be an overview of the knife. I may do a full review of the knife later on. Um, first off, when you pick this knife up, you're going to get a nice leather pouch. Very nice. has the Diskin USA name on it. And very, well, not very soft. It's a leather pouch. Really do wish they put a belt loop on this so that you could wear it as a sheath. However, uh, you're not getting it for this little pouch. You're getting it for the knife. So let's do the overview. You have a uh, carbon fiber textured scale on it. I believe Diskin USA actually makes their own carbon fiber. I know they do make some different types of carbon fiber. On the um, overlay or the um, scale, you have some two dot screws on there to attach it to the actual frame or liner. You have a decorative pivot on this side, another decorative pivot. However, you can tighten or loosen the um, pivot using a Torx wrench. So you can see that right there. Same type of scale on the non-display side, and a low rider pocket clip. I'm not sure if it can be, it cannot be swapped to the other side. So right hand tip up carry only. You can remove it by using those two screws right there. To open a blade, you can either use the thumb stud, very quick deployment, or you can push this scale over, and it is a hidden release automatic. So, show that going over just like that. And you can see the torsion bar inside there. And all the little pieces that make this a dual action hit and release automatic right there. So, when you're looking at this knife, you'll never actually notice that this is a hit and release automatic because it looks just like a regular folding knife. Very fun. I always get a kick out of these. Um, Automax are allowed in my state if they are open carried, um, whatever that really means. Open carrying a pocket knife. I don't know. Strap it to your forehead, I guess. Anyways, um, on the blade it has disc and fire with some flames and some knives. Very cool. You have this little finger choil making the knife very comfortable. Flat ground using a LMAX steel, which it says LMAX right there, so I'll take their word for it. Thin ground, really like that. It's going to be a fantastic cutter. A very beautiful knife also, if you haven't noticed, or maybe it's not a beautiful folder if you don't think this is a beautiful folder. <laughs> I like it. Anyways, uh, I believe a 3.6 inch blade looks like a 3.6 probably no jimping on it at all so if you like jimping this is not your knife I do kind of feel like it's missing jim some jimping up here um, although I don't feel as if it is going to slide out of your hand so let's get to one thing that I do not like and that is the liner slash frame lock. A lot of people like to call this a frame lock due to it being very thick. I like to call it a liner lock because with frame locks when you're holding it like this it prevents the lock from moving that way. With this it has the actual um, scale over it so you're not pushing against the lock. So it's just a very beefy liner lock. It does have a steel lock bar insert so if this moves too far over you can replace that by sending it into disc and knives. From me talking to them, it sounds like they'll have a very nice warranty. Um, I kind of got off in a, uh, talking about something else. I didn't mention what I did not like. I like all that other stuff. However, what I don't like, so it's very difficult to actually get to the lock. And what you have to do, you have to push inwards and then push over, which ends up hurting your finger. Um, actually, the first week 
I owned this, my finger or my thumb was almost bleeding. Well, I think it actually did bleed slightly from actually pushing against this lock so much. Very fun knife, just a killer to close. So really wish they had done something like what Rick Hendra did on the Eclipse and kind of milled out a little place right here to really grab onto that a little bit better and not have to hurt your finger. Or move this back slightly just to give you a little bit more purchase, put some jumping on there, something so you do not push down on a 90 degree angle that makes you feel like you're about to cut your finger every single time you close the knife. Because your finger doing that every time you close a knife, not it's not supposed to do that. Okay, now that that rant is over, I'm done with everything that I dislike about the knife. Is that one feature and a little bit of lack of jimping. Very fast, as you can see. Um, it was a lot slower when I first got the knife, but it was actually explained to me they make the knife a little bit stiff at the beginning so that it has a nice break-in period, and once it's broken in, it uh, performs flawlessly. I'm really looking forward to about a month or two from now when this is extremely smooth. It does use a caged ball bearing system, so you can see right there um, the red, and there will be ball bearings in there. Not sure how many there are. So, do I think this is the perfect flawless knife? No. I really like it, however, by adding jimping and an easier way to get to that liner lock, I think this would be a fantastic knife to carry. It does not have a lanyard hole, although if you really want to put a lanyard on this, you can put it on its low ride pocket clip, just so it's hanging on right there. Um, that wouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, not sure if they have any left-hand carry versions of this. I'm sorry for my left-handed friends. Um, I guess that's really all I can say about this overview. It does have a, um, a carbon fiber backspacer right here. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think if you own a Matt Diskin Fire. Let me know what you got, you think about um, the lock. Does it hurt your thumb on these? Um, also, do you think consider this a mid-tech, a production, or a custom? I consider it completely a production knife. It's not hand-ground. The only thing that's actually hand-done about it is it's put together by hand after the parts are machine made, but even on buck knives, or case knives, or any company, it's going to be put together by hand. So, kind of the lines between production, mid-tech, and custom are mixed. I believe a mid-tech knife is a machine part made, and then hand ground. I believe that's mid-tech. A lot of people consider that custom. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about all those things, and I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. If you have the chance to handle one of these knives, definitely recommend it. Um, it's not a knife for everybody. I mean, I'd say $500 knife. So, I don't know. Do I think it's worth the $500? That, that's difficult to say. It, it's a really killer with that, um, how difficult it is to disengage or how painful it is to disengage the lock. So... I don't know. Will I keep it? I will for at least a couple more months. Okay. So, thanks for watching. See you guys later, and have a great day.